What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A 220 1002 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you are going to learn about Mac operating systems and Linux features and tools for client desktop operating systems. First thing we got to talk about real quick are some best practices. So the best practices necessary to maintain any computer system are as follows. You need to have scheduled backups. You need to have scheduled disk maintenance, system updates from its respective app stores, patch management, driver firmware updates, and antivirus malware updates. So a backup or a data backup is a copy of computer data taken and stored elsewhere so that it may be used to restore the original after a system failure, accident, or some type of data loss event. Backups can be used to protect contacts, email, media files, and documents. Then we have this thing called Time Machine, and this is the default backup software application distributed as part of the Mac OS. The software is designed to work with external storage devices and most commonly used with external disk drives. A few backup utilities for Linux include the following. You have the command line tar, the rsync utilities, amongst others that are available from various Linux distribution repositories. Also, scheduled backups should be run at times when the system is idle, preferably overnight or on the weekends. Next, we have scheduled disk maintenance. So routine issues that involve disk maintenance are scheduled and fixed automatically with Mac operating systems and Linux systems. The cron or the crone, however you pronounce it, the cron utility can set up and run various automated tasks to include disk maintenance. The cron tab utility displays cron scripts by the system or by a user. Next, we have system updates and the app store. So command line system update tools available for Linux that allow for app installation, Linux updates, and maintaining a list of apps, also known as packages for the operating system include DNF, which can be found on Red Hat or Fedora versions of Linux. And then you have the app dash get command, and that is for Debian and Ubuntu versions of Linux. In the Mac operating system, the App Store section of System Preferences provides a variety of options for system updates. And here is a wonderful screenshot showing you what the App Store update window looks like. Let's talk about patch management. So a patch is a set of changes to a computer program or its supporting data designed to update, fix, or improve it. This includes fixing security vulnerabilities and other bugs with such patches usually being called bug fixes. Patches are often written to improve the functionality, usability, or performance of a program. Patch management within organizations with a small number of Linux systems can utilize manual system updates with the yum command and the app dash git command. And we got driver firmware updates. So for Mac, the App Store delivers driver and firmware updates automatically. For most Linux distributions, the app dash git command can be used to manually retrieve driver updates. We got antivirus and anti-malware updates. So despite Windows operating systems being the most vulnerable computers in the world, subject to virus and malware attacks, Mac and Linux are also capable of being targeted as well. Most well-known antivirus, anti-malware software made for Windows usually includes a version for Linux and Mac. Antivirus and anti-malware apps for Linux and Mac should be updated at least daily. All right, let's talk about some tools. So application for system maintenance for Linux and Mac includes some of the following. You have backups and for Mac, that is the time machine. You have restore and snapshots. You have image backup recoveries, disk maintenance utilities, shell and terminals, screen sharing and the force quit option for Mac. 
So restoring snapshot. So to restore a file from Time Machine in Mac, you would just open the finder and select Time Machine from the dock. You would scroll through the backups to locate the file and then click restore. When using Mac laptops, backups and snapshots are stored on the laptop system drive and on the Time Machine and external drive. To restore a file from a Linux backup, you need to see the documentation for the backup app that is being utilized. Let's talk about image recovery. So image recovery options for Mac are as follows. Images can be restored by using the edit, then hitting restore after creating an image with a disk utility. Disk utilities can also be used to reinstall Mac. If the restore system is available from the startup drive, the latest edition of Mac is reinstalled. If the recovery system has been deleted, you must use the internet recovery and internet recovery installs the same edition of Mac originally installed on your system. You can then update it to the latest edition if you choose. And to recover an image with a Linux backup utility, once again, you need to see the utilities documentation for details about how to do that. Let's talk about disk maintenance utility. So First Aid is Max disk utility app for repairing issues with drives such as file systems, partitions, and a variety of other issues. A few Linux terminal mode disk maintenance commands are as follows. You got df-h that lists files and the free space that is in a computer. You got the directory path slash file name that removes the contents of the specified file without removing the file itself. You got the ls-lsr tail-5 command and that command will go out and find the five largest files in the current directory. We got shell slash terminal. So both Mac and Linux use a shell or a terminal app for command line environments. Both operating systems use the terminal utility to run commands, scripts, and programs without a GUI or a graphical user interface. You got screen sharing, and this is included in Mac, which allows for local users on a network or remote users utilizing virtual network computing to control the screen for training or troubleshooting and the sharing of other types of resources, which can be configured through the sharing section of the system preferences. Linux is also capable of supporting screen sharing. You just search for VNC for remote within your Linux distribution. In Mac, you would use the force quit feature to shut down an application. To open the force quit application from the keyboard, just press command option and escape. To start force quit from the menu bar, select the Apple menu icon in your upper left and select force quit. Starting the force quit from an app in the dock, you would just right click the app and hold it to bring up the menu with quit as an option and then select force quit. Let's talk about some features. So Linux and Mac, they share many of the same commands, but there are features that are available for Mac that are not available for Linux. And we'll discuss some of those in the following sections. The first one is multiple desktops, also known as mission control. So mission control is a feature of the Mac operating system. Mission control offers a bird's eye view of all of your open windows, desktop spaces, and any apps in full screen or split view, making it easy to switch between them. It is very helpful when working with multiple displays. Next, we have Spotlight, and this is a system-wide desktop search feature in Mac and iOS operating systems. Spotlight is a selection-based search system, which creates an index of all items and files on the system. It is designed to allow the user to quickly locate a wide variety of items on the computer, including documents, pictures, music applications, and system preferences. In addition, specific words in documents and in web pages in a web browser's history or bookmarks can be searched. It also allows the user to narrow down searches with creation dates, modification dates, sizes, types, and other attributes. With Siri suggestions, you can get the latest news, sports scores, weather conditions, etc. Spotlight can even perform calculations and conversions for you. And you can open Spotlight by pressing Command Spacebar and type in keywords to search the entire system. 
Next, we have iCloud, and this is a cloud storage and cloud computing service for Apple that was launched on October 12th, 2011. iCloud enables users to store data such as documents, photos, and music on remote servers for download to iOS, Mac, or Windows devices, to share and send data to other users, and to manage their Apple devices if they are lost or stolen. iCloud also provides the means to wirelessly backup iOS devices directly to iCloud instead of being reliant on manual backups to a host Mac or Windows computer using iTunes. iCloud also comes with five gigabytes of free storage and you can add more storage anytime you feel like it. Next, we have Keychain, and this is the password management system in Mac developed by Apple. It was introduced with Mac OS 8.6 and has been included in all subsequent versions of the operating system, which is now known as Mac OS. A Keychain can contain various types of data, such as passwords for websites, passwords for FTP servers, SSH accounts, network shares, wireless network information across Apple devices, groupware apps, encrypted disk images, credit card information, private keys, certificates, and secure notes. Next, we have our gestures. So with the multi-touch trackpad or the magic mouse, Mac allows users to tap, swipe, pinch, or spread one or more fingers to perform useful actions. The trackpad and magic mouse options can be located in the system preferences. Next, we have the Finder, and this is the default file manager and GUI shell used on all Mac systems. It is responsible for launching other applications and for the overall management of files, disk, and network volumes. Then we have the remote disk, and this is a way for Macs without optical drives to access another computer's optical drive over a network, but recent Mac computers, they do not have optical drives anymore. And then we have the dock, and this is a prominent feature of the GUI, and it is used to launch applications and to switch between running applications. And then we have the Boot Camp Assistant, and this is a multi-boot utility included with Mac that assists users in installing Microsoft Windows operating systems on Intel-based Macintosh computers. The utility guides users through non-destructive disk partitioning of their HDDs or SSDs and installation of Windows device drivers for Apple hardware. The utility also installs a Windows control panel applet for selecting the default boot operating system. All right. And then finally, let's talk about some basic Linux commands. Now to use these commands, you're going to have to open up a terminal session and some of the commands you will have to run as the root user. And to run these commands as the root, you're going to have to log in as root and use the sudo command. Now I'm not going to sit here and read all of these commands to you. You can pause the video or you can go straight to my website where this video will be posted and you will see a pretty chart that I have put together explaining what these commands are and what they do. All right. So do that because I'm not about to read this stuff to you. All right, so let's do some of this wonderful check on learning. So the first question is, which of the following is a Mac operating system disk maintenance tool? Is it defrag? Is it disk cleanup? Is it disk management? Or is it disk utility? So which of the following is a Mac disk maintenance tool? The correct answer is uh, disk utility. All right, next question. Which of the following system utilities provides access to different command line shells in Mac? Is it command.exe? Is it PowerShell? Is it command.com or is it terminal? So which of the following system utilities provides access to different command line shells in Mac? The correct answer is the terminal. And the final question. A Linux command displaying an absolute path to the current working directory is called what? Move or MV, PWD, RM or remove, R D I R. So a Linux command displaying an absolute path to the current working directory is called what? You're probably not going to get it if you don't know it already because I didn't talk about it in the video, but the correct answer is uh, 
PWD, and that stands for Print Working Directory. All right. So once again, go visit my website to look at all of those wonderful Linux commands that you're going to have to get into your life, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. All right, so in summary, we've talked about Mac and Linux features and tools for client desktop operating systems. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, the share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also, go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A+, 220, 1000, to examination and until next video ladies and gentlemen peace